Today we are looking at the MVPs of August 2024. We do this every month at the start of a month. We look back at the previous month to see who was the most valuable player of WWE in the men's division and the women's division. So let's get started. It's August. August was a big month because two PLEs happened. We just got done with Bash at Berlin, which happened August 31st, so it counts. But SummerSlam also happened in August, and that seems like a lifetime ago. August 4th, I do believe. So we've got to compare all of these notes and figure out who was the MVP. And if you want to be the MVP of this channel and win a belt in the process, not a toy, then you can just comment below, subscribe, put on the notifications. Once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a belt. Why am I doing this? Because I'm trying to become a full-time YouTuber. I am currently at my day job working way too many hours. There's just not enough time in the day, so I am trying to do what it takes to become full-time, and I will give away this belt or the belts behind me. All you got to do, like I said, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Anyways, let's continue on. We'll start with the women's division because this is the first month since I've started this series that Liv Morgan is not the MVP. She has been dethroned. Options this month, there were actually a couple more than usual. We have Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton, you could have said Liv Morgan, and then our eventual winner. The reason why I did not go with Tiffany Stratton is because she hasn't been really in matches. However, she has been very prominent throughout SmackDown. She even opened a SmackDown, which is a really big deal. If you're opening or closing a show, that is huge. Or you're at that 9 o'clock hour. Those are really big deals, and it shows that there are a lot of confidence in her for her to carry a segment. She's been all over SmackDown, sprinkled throughout, and I think that big things are ahead for her, but... She didn't do enough. You could say Nia Jax, though, because A, she won the belt in SummerSlam, and then she had a really good outing on the SmackDown before Bash in Berlin fighting Meacham, defending her title in a street match, which was really awesome, and R.I.P. Meacham, who took a bonsai drop, <laughs> oh gosh, a bonsai drop with a garbage can over her. Wow, that was like, wow. However, I don't feel the storyline beats really matched up with her being the MVP. She's kind of in this duo of Tiffany Stratton and Nia Jax. It seems like whenever those two are together, it's Tiffany, who outshines Nia, and Nia is just kind of the B player when those two are together, which is fine. One is outshining the other in storyline, and one is outshining the other in matches, so they just they just don't make it. Liv Morgan is not the MVP this time around, and she had a really good start. Right out the gates, she won her match at SummerSlam, defending her title against Rhea Ripley, and then she got Dominic Mysterio, the object of her affection. But then... She kind of becomes a background player within the Judgment Day storyline. When it's just her and Dom, she is able to, you know, shine in the spotlight a little more. Her personality is able to come out. But once she gets into the faction, it's not like she's pulling the strings. I thought she was going to kind of be like what Rhea was. But no, she's just kind of Dom's girlfriend when the group is together and that's unfortunate because I think she should have just took over the role of what Rhea had in Judgment Day. I'm not saying that she's had a bad month at all but it's just Rhea in the month of August did better and you're like well she lost though. She didn't win the title. It doesn't matter if you win the title. Wins and losses do matter however storyline matters more. When she lost her match at SummerSlam that led to an arc, a storyline for her that was huge. That for the month of August, she ran rough shot all over Judgment Day with Damian Priest. And they had one week where they didn't. But for the most part, she just looked so strong, so dominant. And the way she lost the match even was by cheating. So she was protected in her loss. And then we get sympathy for her because Dominic turns on her. So it's just so many things in play that we've all had our eyes eyes on Rhea Ripley and this Judgment Day storyline, while not the main event of Bash at Berlin, had more airtime than Gunther and Randy. So while not the main event had more airtime, meaning, you know, in some levels, maybe even more important. And then she goes to Bash at Berlin and she wins. I didn't like the call. 
but it doesn't matter what I liked. All that matters is she was all over the place from SummerSlam all the way to Berlin. She just looked strong, sympathetic, and well, that's why she's your MVP. Now let's go to the men's division. I would have said that the most likely no-brainer MVP would have been Roman Reigns. When he came out in the main event of SummerSlam, it was huge. The pop was amazing. And then on SmackDown when he came out, it was huge. The pop was amazing. And then on the next week, it was huge. The pop was amazing. You see the trend? Anytime that Roman comes out, it's a huge, big deal. But, but... He's not the MVP. And the reason why is because after those three appearances, he gets totally beat down by my boy, <laughs> Jacob Fatu. Oh, I love Jacob Fatu. Love Jacob Fatu. I did a video on Jacob Fatu recently. It's kind of blowing up. So I want to thank everybody for watching it. It's that 13,000 views. It's my most successful talking head wrestling video on this channel so i appreciate everybody checking it out and your comments and did you guys know that i try to personally respond to every single comment uh, really i do so like please please keep those comments coming it gives me something to do throughout the day and i love responding to you guys anyways jacob fatu completely annihilates roman reigns and that's not why roman though isn't your mvp because again it's all about storyline you can be beat in a match or just completely destroyed destroyed but where does it go from here and the thing is this was used to write roman off tv until bad blood probably and that's fine that's fine that's not like a commentary on anything however it does not allow you to be the mvp of the month because you only had three appearances and jacob fatu also has a strong case for being mvp because if you look at it he had this really good moment at SummerSlam where he comes crashing down onto Cody Rhodes and what's cool is he's kind of written out of the story because he's injured himself. He's even in a boot. He's in public wearing a boot and then news comes out that no, it was supposed to happen but we don't know if it really happened because he's selling it so good. This is how good Jacob Fatu is. He does what he's supposed to do in a planned spot but because he does it so well, everybody still thinks that he's injured. It's like it's written into the script, he's going to get injured, and then we're all like, oh my god, he really injures himself because no way somebody can act that good. That's how good Jacob Fatu is. And then he's off TV for a minute, but then when Roman is attacking Solo, Jacob Fatu destroys Roman. That is a huge spot to be in. A just absolutely huge spot to be in. And I would love to put Jacob Fatu as the MVP, but for the most part those were his only two spots there was a segment on tv where he gives up the belt and there was like a little bit of tension with solo but no i just i just can't put him as the mvp even though he had two amazing scene stealing make or break moments of his career in the month of August, he doesn't get it. Bronson Reed also had a career-defining month here. He had three weeks of just dominating and destroying, starting with Seth Rollins. That was huge. Completely murdered Seth Rollins. Then he went on to destroy R-Truth and had an amazing feud with Braun Strowman, uh, well, a match. And it was so good, it made Braun Strowman relevant again. And Bronson Reed, he, he took the ball and he ate it. And then he tsunamied everybody with it. <laughs> he did great. But because it was just moments and not really matches or big prominent matches on the card, I'm not going to give it to Bronson Reed. But he does get acknowledged as somebody who was in contention and just doing a great job. The person who's going to get it, though, is L.A. Knight. Yeah. The reason L.A. Knight gets it is because, A, he beats Logan Paul for the U.S. title, finally getting his first championship win in the WWE, not including the Million Dollar Belt in NXT. He gets the U.S. title from Logan Paul. Big deal. Great match. My actual favorite match of SummerSlam if you're just going athletics. And then throughout August, 
He's all over SmackDown. Even just a promo feels special when he delivers it with that title on his shoulder. Then he has two matches. He fights Santo Escobar, and then he has an open challenge. Open challenges are great when you're a heel because then, you know, some monster comes out and destroy you. But when you're a face, it's even better because you're saying that I will take on all comers, don't matter who it is. And that is just, that's really cool when a face gets to do it. And he was able to do it in Germany where Ludwig Kaiser came, the hometown hero, and they had a great match. So LA Knight, I'm just putting as the MVP because he was just all over SmackDown and it's just good to have this fighting champion. It's almost like the champion that, that Cody Rhodes wants to be, LA Knight is right now. And it's just propelling LA Knight further and further up the card, which is great because I had feared that he had fallen so far after Roman beat him in Saudi Arabia. I feared that LA Knight's time had passed, but I don't know. I think he's slowly building up that resume that maybe by the time next WrestleMania is over, he'll have another shot, another opportunity entering into that main event scene, but this time very credible and not such an underdog. So LA Knight really doing great with what he's been given. This U.S. Championship, I think he's going to elevate it, and I just hope that he continues being the workhorse champion that he is because it's making him look really, really good. And those are your MVPs of August. Let me know what you think. Do you think that somebody else should have been MVP? Did I miss someone completely? I didn't mention Bianca and Jade. They could definitely have an argument for being the MVPs, but really, I don't think so. All they really did was they maintained their spot on the card and they did win the titles back, but let's be honest, those titles are irrelevant unless they're holding it. The titles need Bianca and Jade more than Jade and Bianca need the titles. So that's why they didn't get the, the MVP spot. But let me know in your comments below what you think. And guys, girls, I appreciate every single one of you. Again, I told you in my uh, 3 Hot 3 Not video, this is a very busy week for me. So I don't know how many videos I'll get out, but uh, starting next Tuesday, we'll go back to kind of a more regular schedule. Guys, girls, have a great day.